Good, Good morning. morning. From the pastor and first lady of the Friendship Baptist Church in Hamilton, Georgia, we want to welcome you this morning to our Sunday morning broadcast. We really hope that there's a song, prayer, a word spoken that will truly bless your life. So please join our services now already in progress.
1 Kings chapter 17, verse 15 and 16. When you have it, would you register by saying amen? amen? The word of our God says in that 15th verse, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Grab your neighbor by the hand, look him or her in the eye, declare with me these words say, neighbor. Pastor's going to preach about, watch God work it out. Turn to the neighbor on your other side, say to that neighbor, say neighbor, my pastor is going to preach about, watch God work it out. My brothers and my sisters, I'm thankful today again for the writing of this text. First Kings chapter 17 talks about the provisions and the promises of our God. It's also in chapter 17 today that while we usher in that God is indeed a provider, while we usher in that God indeed will make provisions for those that believe in him, it also ushers in a need for human participation. My brothers and my sisters, today I stopped to report on my way to heaven's table that yes, I do understand that indeed we serve a sovereign God. I do understand the very essence of our text today that God is a God that can do whatever he wants, when he wants, and with whatever he wants to do it with. And all things will work out for the good of God. But it's in this text today that we must understand that yeah, while God can do whatever he wants to do, do, God will use you and I in order that his blessings might be received. And my brothers and my sisters this morning, that's why I come to tell the Lord thank you because I want to be used by God. I come this morning to tell the Lord thank you because I understand it's not about me, but it's all about the orders of my God. And I wonder today, is there anybody in the Friendship Church that will help me preach a little while in here? I feel a little better and say, Pastor, I know I serve a God that's able to work it out. Is there anybody in here that know that you've been between the bark and the sap? Is there anybody in here that know you've had some stormy days in your life? It didn't look like you were going to make it, but how many of y'all in here will come on the fourth Sunday in April to say, Lord, I want to just pause to tell you thank you because you worked it out for my good. Is there anybody in here? I just need now of y'all I may ten that will tell God, Lord, I thank you because when I look back over my life and when I see where you have brought me from, I can't help but to say, Lord, I thank you because you worked it out for me. Yeah. Do I have any help in here? Yeah, it's, it's First Kings chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17, my brothers and sisters, it deals with three individuals. It, it deals with the widow's woman. It deals with her son, but yet it deals with the prophet Elijah. It's in chapter 17, my brothers and sisters, that yeah, when God says he's going to do and take care of us, it's in First Kings chapter 17 that we got to learn to take God at his holy word. Are y'all in here with me? I just proved to you moments ago that we in our final humanistic ways will sometimes let up. Are y'all in here with me? But you ought to tell God, thank you, that when I learn to hold to his unchanging hand, how many of y'all know God will never let up on you? How many of y'all know God will keep you when you can't keep yourself? Is there anybody in here today that will just say, Lord, I, I just want to thank you because you're in the business of taking care of me. Are y'all in here with me? You, you know the story. It's a familiar story, but yet it's a story with a right now understanding. It's a familiar story, my brothers and sisters, because it deals with a woman that only had a little bit of meal and only had a crew of oil, but yet it's a story, my brothers and sisters, that will help the individual to know that when you take care of the business of God, God will take care of your business. Is there anybody in here today that will know I I had more month than money, but God, he took care of my business. Did anybody here know my change was strange, man? My dollars didn't make me holler, but how many of y'all in here know that God will take care of you? 
That's why I'm 11. I can't sit down like God had not done nothing for me. Chapter 17 discusses with me and says that, listen, when I learn to lift up God's name, when I learn to do what God's word say do, he'll open up the windows of heaven and he'll pour down some blessing that I have room enough not even to receive it. Is there anybody in here that said, Lord, I need a blessing? Is there anybody in here that said, Lord, I, I've worked all week long. I stopped by Wednesday night Bible study and I had to go back all week long. But I come on this Sunday morning because I need a blessing. How many of y'all in here need God to bless you? How many of y'all need God to open up your heart, open up your mind, open up your spirit? Well, I dare you to go on and lift up his name. Lift up his name because you do know he's still worthy to be praised. Do I have any hip yet? The story says the woman uh -huh. was going to take the little bit of meal, yeah. uh -huh. the little crude oil, yeah, yeah. make a cake. Uh -huh. Her and her son were going to eat it, lay down, and die. Right. Are y'all in here with me? Yeah. It's indicative of the fact that what I have plans to do, right. God always has another way. Is there anybody in here ever sought out to do things on your own, the things that you thought you had planned for, things you had thought you prepared for, things you thought you had everything in order, and it looked like when you got to the start line to begin the work that you set out to do, God changed the way you did it. Are y'all here with me? It, 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 it lets me know enough that guess what? My ways are not God's ways. God's ways are not my ways. So what do you want me to do today? I just want you to take God at his word. Is there anybody on my right in here that know you got to take God at his word? Is there anybody on my left in here that know I got to take God at his word? Why? Because when I learn to take God at his word, how many of y'all know he'll do for you what you can't do for yourself? If I don't go another further in the message right there, you ought to tell God thank you. Right there, you ought to praise his holy name. Right now, you ought to lift up the name of Jesus because you do know he's worthy. Do I have any help here? I'm going to make me and my son a cake. Lay down and die. Here walks the little preacher. Do I have any help here? Elijah shows up and says, I'm hungry. Make my cake first. Right. Do I have any help here? Right. I, I know I know we don't have no folks around friendship like the lady did then, but there, there's some people when the preacher asks the people to do anything, they look at them upside down. Right. But, but, but the text says in 1 Kings chapter 17 that whenever God gives a word to the preacher, the preacher gives a word to the people, it's the people that ought to take the preacher at his word because you know by faith the word came from God. Are y'all in here with me? Elijah says, I tell you what, make mine first. Do I have to help you? But aren't you glad the woman had faith not in Elijah? But how many of you know she had faith in God? Can, can I just bear that with Paul right there to push this on the pulpit? Here it is. You can't put your faith in a man. I wish y'all would help me in here. You, you got to learn to put your faith in God. Are y'all been here with me? But because you do know I'm just the earthen vessels, don't you? But but when my faith is in God, watch this. God could use the earthen vessel to display an array of heavenly treasures. I wish y'all would say amen to me. I wish y'all would help me preach in here because I know God will work it out. Is there anybody here know in your home, he'll work it out. Anybody know on your job, he'll work it out. In fact, matter of fact, anybody know right here in friendship, God will work it out. How do you know he'll work it out? Because he works it out for my good. Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for the good of those that love God and are the called according to his purpose. Are y'all been here with me? My brothers and sisters, here it is today, 17, 1 Kings says, day, all you gotta do is take God at his word. Do I have any help here? When you take God at his word, then April, then the next thing you gotta do is just simply stand still and watch God work it out. 
do I have any help in here? There are a couple of excerpts I want to exercise from this exegesis. Here it is. First of all, I want you to understand that when I'm going to watch God working out, the first thing I've got to understand is this. It's not about self-gratification. It's not about what I can get out of it. It's not about what I can do for myself. But how many of y'all know it's, it's all about what God can do through me? See, beloved, you got to understand that God is going to work it out there. You got to learn the right to avail yourself that God can use you. Do I have any help in here? I know you can't sing like uh, uh, the, the, the best of the singers, but if you open up your mouth, how many of y'all know God will use you? I know you can't pray like the best of prayers, but how many of y'all know when you open up your mouth and just talk to God, uh, he'll talk back to you. Do I have any help in here? You, you might not can preach like the best of preachers, but if you stand by behind the sacred death and call on God's name. How many of y'all in here know he'll fix it for you? Anybody here glad about it? Anybody glad? You ain't got to wait till you get back home for the problem be solved. How many of y'all know he'll fix it right now? You ain't got to wait for the doctor to call you or tomorrow, but how many of y'all know he'll fix it right now? How many of y'all in here thank God that he ain't gonna wait to fix it? It's already done. Text yeah. says yeah. it's not about self gratification. Right. How do I know? Because I pull verse 12. Uh -huh. Verse 12 says in the text, uh -huh. and she said, As the Lord God liveth, yeah. I have, look what she says, not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel. Yeah. The text says in verse 12, and a little cruise. Of all. My brothers and sisters, take says, according to verse number 12, God is standing at the door, Amen. knocking, saying, if you open up, I will come in. See, my brothers and sisters, can I just share with somebody, sometimes uh, we miss our breakthrough, we miss our blessing simply because uh, we won't move by our faith. Are y'all been here with me? Instead of her being concerned about what she didn't have, she was concerned about what she had. And guess what? Whenever we come to the point that we're more concerned about what we don't have, instead of what we got, God can't bless us. Do I have any help here? Well, because you must understand when I come to the point where I recognize it's not about self-gratification, then here it is. I want you to know it's not an independent blessing, but here it is. It is a dependent breakthrough. Do I have any help here? Well, what are you saying, Pastor David? In the A clause of that first point here is what I want you to understand. God is not in the business of just blessing you. Come on, y'all say something back to me. God is not in the business of just opening up the doors or windows of heaven just for you. But you better know he's in the business of blessing you so you can be a blessing to somebody else. Do I have any help in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. It's, it's not an independent blessing, but it is a dependent breakthrough. There's a difference then between a blessing and a breakthrough. You must understand that blessings sometimes uh, can be temporary. Are uh, y'all in here with me? You, you, you can receive a blessing from God. And, and guess what? When you get to get your blessing, sometimes uh, you'll use your blessing up. Amen. And then that's why you end up going back to God and say, Lord, give me another blessing. And you didn't do nothing with the one he gave you. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Can I get some help from the Bible? There was a man he gave some talents to. Now y'all been here with me, and, and, and two of the men did what he said do with the talent, but the other one said, it's all I got. He did nothing with his talent, but when God came back and asked him, what did you do with what I gave you? He couldn't answer, and guess what he did? He took what he gave him and gave it to somebody else. I want to suggest to somebody, I, I don't want God to give my blessing away. I want God to move me away from blessings uh, and take me to the moments of breakthroughs. Uh, how many of y'all in here need a breakthrough in your life? Huh? How many of y'all in here need God to do some things in your life, in your home, in your family? For you personally, I need a breakthrough. But God will. He'll do it. First of all, watch this. It's not, I got to go, it's, it's not about a independent blessing. But it's about a dependent breakthrough. Which
which leads me to the second part of that first call, of that first call. Watch this. It's a moment of trust in God. Are y'all in here with me? If you're going to move from your blessing to your breakthrough, which consists now of your blessing, then secondly, you've got to have moments of trusting in God. Go back to the text. It's in verse 12. I ain't torn it out. Here it is. She said, listen to her answer. Her answer is, watch this. The text says in verse 12, as the Lord God liveth, I have what? Do y'all see in verse 12? I have not a cake. But the text says, but a handful of meal and a barrel of clues of oil. Behold, I'm gathering sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to move from where you are to where God would have you to be, sometimes you got to take God at his word. Do I have any help here? So some of us on the verge of making a decision. Some of us on the verge of trying to see what the next step is going to be in our life. Watch this. Why are you trying to figure it out? How many of y'all in here help the young preacher to know God has already worked it out? That's why, beloved, I don't sit there today like I don't know the God that I serve. If I serve the God that can speak to the dead man if he get up and live again, if I can speak, serve a God that will move or create heaven and earth, surely I can put my trust in a God that will take care of me. Is there anybody in here that will give testimony to the very fact that God, he'll take care of me? Is there anybody in the Friendship Church that feel good now that can say, Lord, I just want to thank you. Have I got any help here? When I was in trouble, you delivered me. I just want to thank you. When I couldn't see my way in through or out, you delivered me. Have I got any help here? When I almost lost my mind, thank you for delivering me. Is there anybody in the building this morning that got to thank you on the altar of your heart? Is there anybody in the friendship church that got a hallelujah on your lips? Have I got any help here? Can you say thank you for delivering me? Have I got any help here? The Bible says according to 15 and 16 that when God delivered her every time she went to a company it looked like the more she dipped out the more God poured back in have I got any help here can I tell somebody there's a breakthrough to your blessing if you want God to take you from where you are to where God would have you to be you got to learn to empty yourself so God can pour it back in. Have I got to help you? Anybody in here? A no God will deliver. Anybody in here? A no God will fix it. Is there anybody in the friendship church that no God will work it out? Can you say it? Can you say it? Have I got to help you? The reason why. I know God, he will work it out in my cause. He came from glory, shot by Bethlehem, born in a lonely manger, no room in the ear, 12 years old. I got to be about my father's business, 33 years of age. They hung him high, they stretched him wide. Anybody claimed that he worked it out? He died. Anybody know he died? He died from the sixth to the ninth hour. He died till the sun refused to shine. He died till the moon drifted in blood. But can I tell somebody? He worked it out. Have I got to help you? Because they thought he was still dead. But early Sunday morning. Anybody glad it was early Sunday morning? Sunday morning, the same God that killed Jesus on Friday. Early Sunday morning, he got up. Anybody glad he got up? All power is in my hand. Say yeah. Can y'all say yeah? Say yeah. Can y'all say yeah? He were 
worthy. Anybody glad he's worthy? He's worthy, he's worthy. Anybody shout he's worthy? Anybody know God is still worthy? How do you know from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same? Anybody know God is still worthy? Can you say it? Can y'all say it? To God's house is now open. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. First Lady Arnithia Day and myself, we would like to say thank you so very much for listening and tuning in to our morning broadcast. Here at Friendship Baptist Church, we are a family of love united in the power of Christ. And we invite you to join us in the beautiful city of Hamilton for worship live and in person. Listen, we're located at 101 Friendship Street, Hamilton, Georgia, the heart of Harris County, where we're looking for you to be a part of us. And remember, as Pastor Day always says, we're not smiling on God, but, but God, God is, is smiling, smiling on, on us. us.